Hello, this is Mark Dudley for EDL 851 Module 8, Legal Aspects of Teacher Evaluations. Um, one of the first couple articles we read was about um, contained information about the Every Student Succeed Act. Um, it ended the federal government's involvement in the evaluation of teachers. Uh, teachers' evaluations are now not based on uh, not significantly based on test scores. There are uh, a little bit based on that, and it allowed states to uh, redesign and submit new accountability systems. Uh, some of the key provisions um, that ESSA provides, um, states are no longer told what to do by the Department of Education. Uh, states do have to establish goals. Um, they have to base their school performance on factors other than test scores. Uh, they have to design and develop evaluation systems based on student achievement. Also talks about developing a system to audit the evaluation and support from the state. So they have to, um, there's some give and take there, um, and there has to be some accountability from the State Department. Uh, one of the cases that I found interesting when I was reading through this was the Cook versus Bennett case in Florida. Uh, I teach world history. Um, there is no end of course exam, no state testing for that. Um, in, in South Carolina, uh, U.S. history is our end of course for social studies. Um, so there's no real way to gauge me on a test score. So I thought this was very interesting. The case was about uh, teachers and subjects without standardized tests, kind of like myself being judged unfairly based on the progress of students they don't teach so school-wide, basically on a school-wide growth formula. Um, so I, I found this very interesting because this is kind of this is kind of what I would deal with if there was some unfair evaluations going on. Um, the state ruled towards the teacher. Um, they found like this practice was unfair, uh, but I thought it was kind of interesting that um, this is something that I could go through if there was an unfair evaluation process. Another article we read was the uh, issues around teacher evaluations. Um, some of the questions that were brought up and discussed, why, why has teacher performance evaluation become such a central education issue? And again, I think it's um, about accountability. We want our students to learn, um, and how much of that do we uh, put on test scores? How much of that do we put on, on the teachers? Uh, some of the questions were, how do new teacher evaluation systems work? How have teacher unions responded to these new evaluations? And is there evidence that new teacher evaluation strategies are working? Um, and that's the last question is very interesting because I think in education, we have a habit of changing things before we are, we can even evaluate and see if things are working in the right direction. So I think these are some very interesting questions um, that they brought up. Some of the terms that came up that uh, some of these were familiar and some of these um, I really didn't have much experience with. Uh, collective bargaining, uh, last in, first out. Um, if you're, if there's a teacher cut and you're one of the last they hired, uh, there's a good chance that you'll be looking for a new job. Uh, teacher observations, teacher tenure, um, something that does not exist in South Carolina, and then value-added models, again, something that doesn't exist in South Carolina when it comes to teacher evaluations. Um, in South Carolina, I'm a part of Lexington District 1. Uh, this is a pretty, uh, this is a very fast-growing district. Uh, we have over 30-plus schools. Um, we're building, we're in the process of building a new middle school in our five-year plan. We have the process, of, we're in the process of building five, five new or revamped schools. Um, so this school district is really growing pretty rapidly. We just switched over to expanded adept. Um, we're evaluated on the 4.0 rubric, which if you actually held the document in your hand, is about a five to, I think it's about six to seven, six, six to seven pages long. Um, there's four main categories, instruction, environment, planning, and professionalism, and each one of these has about, uh, depending on the length of the thing, is like six to 12 indicators. So it's a lot to look for when you're being evaluated. Um, the, they aligned it with the profile of the South Carolina graduate, so what we want our students to be able to do when they graduate from a South Carolina high school. Um, and then 
we are evaluated summatively, so a big one every five years, and then every year you're you're evaluated. So the every year evaluations are to help you grow as a teacher, and the summative ones are to help you re re uh, certify and get your new contract. Um, so that's what that's what we do here in Lexington District One. Um, as far as teacher recourse, um, this is something I didn't know, so I actually had to look it up in our handbook. Um, if you have a problem with a uh, evaluation, you have to uh, submit a written appeal to the evaluator and our principal. Um, in, in our school, at least, the evaluators are most of the time their assistant principals. Um, and then if you're not satisfied with the decision, you have to submit a written appeal to the head of human resource resources and then that is handled at the district level um, again this is something that's new to me i didn't realize that um, what the steps were so i thought it was interesting that um, we actually have basically two steps that we can go through if we don't like our evaluation uh, one of the cases i looked up that i thought was kind of interesting um, was out of new york um, master teacher sherry letterman um, obviously um, is a master teacher so she's very um, very respected in her field um, however she was given a low evaluation score based on a computer program um, and I thought it was interesting it kind of reminded me of uh, football rankings and how they projected in the past how they projected who's number one based on strength to schedule and all that kind of stuff but this computer program predicted how uh, students should do on test and obviously um, it can be very vague you know I'm not sure how the program works things like that um, the court actually ruled in favor of the teacher said that the program had major biases and the school district didn't have real date real data to back up her evaluation um, and one of the things was it was really based on uh, teacher um, really based on uh, test scores and the year before she was very effective her scores went down um, 10 15 points the following year and then she received this uh, ineffective grade so again it was it was interesting to see that school district using kind of a computer program to see how effective teachers were and I feel like that um, the court got this one right for sure uh, as a as a future school leader, um, evaluations, I think, bring a lot of stress, a lot of worry on teachers. Um, I guess nobody really likes to be um, judged on how, you know, the in my case, high school, how 14 through 18 year olds do on things. And we worry a lot about what those are. Um, as a teacher, I would just, I mean, as a as an administrator, I would just over communicate. I would over prepare them for what's coming, um, let them know uh, what's going on we would train on it we would do professional development on it I just think it's the more you get them comfortable in that setting the more um, natural it becomes and less of a focus that it becomes um, and then you know the last thing is try to make evaluations not a four-letter word okay we're all here trying to do a job our job is to help students um, learn help them be successful uh, when they get out of school and so there is going to be some accountability so we have to get uh, teachers staff familiar with that comfortable with that um, and okay with you know assessing themselves and then being assessed and learning how to grow because as the educators we all really have to be lifelong learners and if we're not willing to do that then we might need to find another field to be in so i think the biggest thing is making evaluations natural making them comfortable and helping uh, my staff grow uh, in the future. And that's my presentation. Hope you enjoyed listening.